Hello. Today we will be discussing about nonlinear programming and how within the domain of business analytics and specifically operation and supply chain analytics the optimization methodology uses nonlinear programming to solve the business cases or specifically how it can help in decision making so let's start our presentation and first thing so operation and supply chain supply chain analytics optimization using nonlinear programming so first we'll be talking about introduction then challenges to nonlinear programming models then we will looking at inventory management and specifically because we will have case which is multi period inventory management model and then we look come to that particular case which is world class furniture and then once we understand what is nonlinear programming and inventory management and how to do nonlinear programming in case of inventory management at uh, a hypothetical case world class furniture they it can be used in nonlinear programming is in multiple cases i'm just taking one case to illustrate then we'll be talking about exploring big data with nonlinear programming and then we will be summarizing so kindly refer to my earlier video on linear programming where the objective function and constraint are linear equations so linearity assumption is there or uh, linearity condition is there rather where is a part of linearity both proportionality and additivity is there specifically in algebraic mathematical equations and then we put linear equations linear programming to solve the problem but in non linear programming we deal with not proportional or additive business relationship so the linearity assumption or the constraint or condition that we that is there in linear programming that no longer holds true but the structure of non linear programming remains same as object same as linear programming which is objective function and set of constraint but these constraint and the objective function become non linear it that therefore it is more challenging to solve of course it is difficult to use but why we use non linear programming because it it is more accurate than linear programming so these and non linear programming models they are represented with curved or curved surface whereas the linear programming models they are straight line so they are linear and nlp models they are com complicated with large num if there is a large number of decision variables so if you have to represent relationship between them the nlp models become a bit complicated because of non linearity three challenges to nlp first is in nlp you may be looking at local optimum while there is a global optimum that point exist 
solution is not always find out at the extreme point and then in NLP you find multiple feasible area I'll just uh, show you the illustration of that first is like you may be looking at uh, some solution here whereas there may be another solution existing at the global maximum and then solution is not always found at extreme point so nonlinear ob this is objective function nonlinear you can see nonlinear here these are the constraint and you see that optimal solution is not at the extreme it is elsewhere third is because of this constraint 2 this is constraint 3 this is constraint 1 this is the solution feasible area and you can find that this is also a feasible area and this is so multiple feasible areas can exist and how to deal with these challenges we use uh, advanced heuristic that, that such as genetic logarithm it is one of the methods in solver simulated annually generalized reduced gradient GRG method of nonlinear programming this is something we will be using today in Microsoft Excel solver where we solve the numerical problem then of course quadratic programming and parallel but sometimes these algorithms are not successful let's come to the case so that we can illustrate the uh, nonlinear programming from the practical point of view so this world-class furniture is a furniture shop that is uh, selling five different furniture categories and one specific like chairs table Almira etc I'll just show you the details and when we in this particular case we are looking at inventory cost minimization so one thing that comes up there is EOQ model so EOQ model allows to optimally calculate the amount of inventory with the goal of minimizing the inventory cost so if you have to what is it what point the total inventory cost will be minimum how much inventory one should hold in the warehouse or in the store but uh, when we do EOQ model of inventory management we do not consider storage capacity and uh, we do not uh, consider st st storage capacity and we do not consider the budget these two things are missing while EOQ model is implemented and in practical reality one has to look into both these aspect also like how much how much furniture one can have is have in one store and what is the budget that he can order the goods and keep it keep furniture shop can keep it in the store so this is uh, the products that we are talking about table chair bed sofa and bookcases where warehouse capacity at this furniture world class furniture is 200,000 cubic feet average inventory budget is 1.5 million dollars weekly demand is 1125 for table for chair is, it is 2750 for beds is 3075 for sofa is 3075 for bookcase is 750 purchasing price per unit is dollar 45 for chair it is eight dollar 85 for beds 125 dollars so for 155 bookcase is 125 holding cost per unit we are talking to weekly weekly holding cost per unit is two dollar for table 
three dollar for chair three dollar for beds three dollar for sofa four dollar for bookcases order cost per order hundred dollars for chairs two twenty five dollars for beds one twenty five dollars for sofa one thirty five dollars bookcases hundred dollars storage in cubic feet per unit each table take 84 cubic feet each chair take 106 cubic feet it take 140 cubic feet so far take 70 cubic feet and cases take 100. before we go further into this case let's first understand what is inventory management and what is this EOQ model that we are talking about so inventory the stock of any item or resource used in an organization so what is this item stock of raw materials what could be stock of finished products could be stock of components stock of supplies or work in progress manufacturing inventory it also include the work in progress refer to item that contribute or become part of what is product there are two general type of multi-period inventory management system first is fixed order quantity model also called EOQ or Q model and this is what we gonna working on in the numerical example that we gonna just see and it, what happened is it's an event triggered and it's a perpetual system multi-period per perpetual system in fixed time period model also called P model or the periodic system periodic review or fixed order interval system it is time t time trigger and after a certain fixed time what takes stock of inventory and then order the inventory items to reach the maximum level or the desired level desire and uh, what is inventory models are designed to ensure that ensure that an item will be available on an ongoing basis because you don't want inventory to run out so you want it to be available on ongoing basis so let's look at fixed order quantity model that's going to be used a little bit let's understand the report theory and the concept so in the fixed order quantity model you have you are holding an inventory and suddenly sales happen and inventory keep on going down and as soon as it reaches a reorder level you place an order for an order quantity Q and after this the after reorder of course sales keep on happening and red inventory keep on reducing and after this lead time suddenly the this is the order lead time suddenly the your next whatever you ordered in your store or in your warehouse that orders come from the factory or the supplier and suddenly your inventory again reaches to the set level or to the queue so it falls keep on using falls to almost zero or zero then again the queue items queue units come to the warehouse or the store and again the inventory become queue units so you always order Q units when inventory reaches reorder point. Inventory arrives after lead time. Inventory is raised to the maximum level Q. And then one of the assumption is the inventory is consumed at a constant rate. So if you look at total cost, so some this is an example where the total cost of inventory is this is an on an annual basis total demand of the product into cost per unit so this is item cost this is d annual demand divided by q quantity to be order and this is store setup or ordering cost s is the ordering cost so this becomes the total annual ordering cost Q by 2 is the average order into H which is 
annual storage or holding or storage cost prevent so this is the total cost and when you try to okay, let me see if I am trying to reduce the total cost the graph is something like this at what point at what Q point everything is constant the total cost become lowest so that is the Q optimal which is represented by under root 2 demand in this period it could be annual or it could be normally it is for the period right so if the period is I could be monthly yearly or weekly so or daily depending on what period you are choosing so so Q opt will be equal to under root 2 demand during the period ordering cost during the period or holding or storage cost during the period and the reorder point is average daily demand daily demand into the lead time suppose daily demand is 10 lead time is 5 so reorder will become 5 and let's take an example suppose annual demand is 1000 unit in a shop Average daily demand will become 1000 divided by 365. Order cost is 5 per unit. Holding cost is 1.25 dollars. Lead time is 5 days. Cost per unit is. So Q optical pick up Q optimal or EOQ become equal to under root 2 is annual demand into order cost divided by cost per unit right. and this become 89.4 so this is the Q optimal reorder point the 12,000 the daily demand delete time is 13.7 total cost 1000 units per annum into 12.5 this is the cost per unit this is the item cost this is holding this is ordering cost and this is holding cost so total this is the total cost is dollar twelve thousand six hundred eleven so let's come back uh, to our problem and here we are using UQ that is fixed order quantity Q model or UQ model and this is the data given so you can see weekly demand period is for us is weekly so demand is given purchase price per unit that is cost per unit holding cost per unit or we call it storage cost and this is ordering cost and this is a storage space required in the warehouse this, you have 200,000 that is the total warehouse capacity in a shop this world class furniture and average inventory cost is 1.5 million that is sorry, average inventory budget so let's uh, come back and we have to find out that okay eoq is something better than eoq because in eoq doesn't have the inventory budget and the storage constraint so there are two constraints which is not there in eoq model so whether this non-linear programming can compensate for that so let's see if help we get so first thing we do similar to linear programming first we define the decision variable and decision variable is number of in this particular case is number of units number of units in inventory of different of five different furniture products let's go to excel let's see if we can explain it so you can see same same information what I've explained in PPT, I have put it in Excel sheet. Five different products. 
table, chair, bed, sofa, and bookcases. This information we already discussed. So let's say EOQ. Two under root two. Let's go under root two ds divided by h. That we already discussed. So let's look at uh, same calculation goes here, but we are looking at what we are interested in. Let me call it by green because this is something that is of interest. That okay, UQ we can find for the formula, but we are looking at optimized order quantity for each of these products. So this will become x1, let's put it 1, put x2 as 2, just x3 number of beds in the inventory, 3 number of sofas, 4 number of cases, x5. Okay. And then we are looking, there's some calculations I have shown here, and how do I show it? I go to formulas, yeah, and I'll just show formula. If I just take it back, it will show me the numbers. So what I've done is I go to the top in Microsoft Excel, go to formulas, as you show. Average inventory is inventory yeah, in this case whatever we will find we find the optimized order quantity so that divided by 2 become the average inventory average number of or orders per period is weekly demand divided by optimized order quantity total supply available is optimized order quantity multiplied by average number of orders per period Maximum qubit food storage required this is something of interest. It becomes total optimized order quantity multiplied by storage space required. Each one is for that particular and the total will be I'll sum them all. So all the whatever I'm calculating here that it is getting summed here. Ordering cost per period is average number of orders per period and then ordering cost per order holding cost per period is average inventory multiplied by holding cost per, per unit per period so inventory operating cost this is something that is of interest it becomes holding cost per period for that particular product and the ordering cost so ordering cost plus holding cost. This is the total inventory operating cost. And if you want to call average inventory value, of course, it adds the inventory operating cost per period plus uh, weekly demand into purchase. Any the, put the total price of the product is also or total cost of the product is also added into it on the inventory cost inventory operating cost plus the product cost so that is something and we sum them here so now idea is we have want to figure out x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 we go back to our powerpoint presentation and see if we can so formulate the objective First is define decision variable and then formulate the objective function. So what is our objective function? Basically we are looking at what is the inventory operating cost. So it is holding cost plus ordering cost. Correct? And holding cost is holding cost that particular product xj which is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 and ordering cost we can find from here ordering cost of that particular product to its demand per period that is one week divided by the inventory of that product 
by v so this so it's total inventory operating cost is holding plus operating the equations come like this summation which is equal to 1 to 5 hj into xj divided by 2 plus 4j into dj divided by xj step 3 so once we have decision variable objective function we set fair on the constraint constraint first is i told you is warehouse capacity sj is a storage space per unit of our product and to xj inventory of that particular product is less than total in this case it's two lakh two hundred thousand in the feet purchasing budget 1.5 million so it's less than p so 1.5 million then we also try to figure out the non-negative and x2 x2 x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 should be more than equal to zero so now our final mathematical equations become like minimize z j summation j is to 1 5 at j x j divided by 2 plus o j d j and back j so of course it's a non-linear it's not a linear so we have to use non-linear programming subject to linear constraint which is storage space then non-linear constraint which is on the budget and then non-negativity constraint that all this x1 to x5 all are more than equal to zero so let's go back to excel and see if we so let's go back to excel and let's see if we can solve it So I'll go to data solver. Okay, so let's see what I want to minimize. I have cal calculated inventory operating cost. This is something that I want to minimize by changing the variable cell, which I put here to here. Subject to constraint. I'm saying my total storage maximum qubit storage space is less than equal to two hundred thousand and I add what is my second constraint? My budget. So my budget which is average inventory value.
okay so I only have two constraint uh, where my total I want to inventory operating cost I want to reduce minimize by changing the variable cell that is number of x1 to x5 and my total okay this is something add here that my maximum storage So I have only two thing that storage space required is less than B3 and inventory budget is less than equal to because inventory value. So I make all these decision variables, make them non-negative and I solve general reduce gradient GRG non-linear method because this Nonlinear programming and let's say song and I say okay. There is an issue. Okay, let's try one more time. As we've done before, reducing the inventory operating cost per period by changing the variable cell B16 to F16. The maximum qubit storage required is less than 200,000. Average inventory value. 24 is less than B4. Change in nonlinear. Okay, we have found the solution. Let's select. Okay, we got it. So you can see while the EOQ for table is 335, but when we take constraint both the two constraint into consideration we get 292 and by EOQ we found number of chair inventory to be 642 but when we took constraint it is 570 526 the number of beds furniture and store by EOQ, but as for NLP, it is 452. So far, which is 526 per formula, NLP is 485. Book case is 194. Then using NLP, it is 178. So you can easily see that it is gives you much more practical and feasible given the constraint. Something that is not directly available from UQ, one can get optimized out of it. using all any program so that i hope you like solving an lp model with microsoft excel solver add-in sometime we have to deal with uh, big data and big data has volume variety and velocity so high volume more num a large amount of data allows you to explore formulate and solve previously unsolvable problem so it is good as far as nlp is concerned volume is good variety and velocity these are challenges so you have need to have additional layer as and then you those additional layer will filter 
to summarize the data and then you can put optimization into it. Then of course we have advanced software programs available. So we have to navigate to learn permutation variables and constraint, hundreds and thousands of variables. So all these things is possible using advanced software program. Solver is one such software tool, but there are many software tools available in the market. For example, I have solved NLP and LP and numerous problems using R software, which is open source, freely available, statistical analysis software. So, to summarize, the nonlinear programming formulation is almost similar to the linear programming formulation. More details are which are available in my another video on linear programming model. GRG logarithm grid generalized reduced gradient algorithm is best suited for NLP model that what we have used in MS Excel solver added to solve a particular case of inventory management and world class furniture shop sure. provides a good starting point trial template we always add a non-negative constraint for this variable and we have to play like you see you just had some issues with solver you have to play close attention when selecting sort of parameters. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much. Keep on watching my other videos on operation and supply chain analytics. Thank you very much.